Hello folks, welcome to a brand new loop tutorial. My name's Lee Townsend and I'm going to be taking you through my cover of Ed Sheeran's photograph. If you've not seen my video of this that I uploaded last week, you can do so by clicking the card above. Um, I recommend that you do that so that you can follow along this video easily. Uh, my version's very similar to Ed's live version, but uh, it won't be identical. So um, you can reference the two um, between that and this video. Uh, I'm gonna get straight in, and the first thing you're gonna need to do is to detune your guitar. You need to detune the fattest string, the bottom E string, down to a D, because this song is in drop D. So we'll do that. So. That allows us to play easier chords, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm using a Boss RC30 loop station as always. I've also got a Boss FS5U plugged into it as well to allow me to switch between the two channels because this is a dual channel uh, loop pedal. You can actually play this song with a single channel loop pedal. I'll show you how you can do that in a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get straight in with the first of the loops, um, which is the first chord of the song, actually. Um, which is one finger on the second fret G string which frets that note and it also mutes the top thinnest strings, the two thinnest strings. So the only notes that are actually fretted are those four. Um, and I just play four beats of that into the first channel of the loop pedal. It's like this. That is literally all that goes into that channel. Um, and if you've only got a single channel loop pedal, uh, like I said, you can play this song, just skip that, that section altogether and go straight into the next bit that I'm playing into the uh, second channel. Because when I finish looping into the second channel, I flick back over to the first track and just drop it out and it's never used again. So it's not vital that it's there. In fact, Ed doesn't even play that. I just add it in because I think that it fills it out a little bit while I'm building the loops up. So um, the next loop that goes in, goes into the second channel and it's just muting all the strings and playing a rhythm like this. And that's it. And then after that, we go straight in with uh, a bass drum beat, which is played by hitting the bridge of the guitar down there. This guitar is a little bit modified. The uh, pickup that came with the guitar that's under the bridge uh, is virtually only used for that because I installed this pickup in the sound hole which is used for picking up the strings more. So, um, but any guitar, any acoustic guitar that's got a built-in pickup, you'll be able to get that sound out of it. Um, so I'll add those two tracks in for you now so you can hear how it sounds. So you can hear how uh, effective that sounds already uh, and then the next bit that goes over that also onto the second track is the little riff that goes like this which is really simple to play as well it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to it like I always say the more you play something the more sort of um, competent you'll get at it um, so it's fretted with the first finger on the third fret of the B string which is the second thinnest string and there's a little bit of a stretch up to the sixth fret with your third finger, which uh, is playing the G string. So you're fretting those notes and the picking goes from the D to the B to the G to the B. So like this. And that's the first half of this riff. Very, very straightforward. And then we move down to the second fret on the G string and we're playing that note and then pulling the finger off. So we've got second fret to open with one pluck of the pick. So. Um, so, and after that, we're going on to the fourth fret on the D string with your third finger. So the whole thing is. So the whole thing all together is. So yeah, as I say, the more you play that, the more competent you'll get at it and the better it'll sound. So I'm gonna add that in so that you can hear how it sounds. As you can hear, that already sounds really effective. 
Um, and then, as I said before, the next thing I do is flip over to the first channel, drop that out, and it's never used again. Uh, so I'll do that now. So they're the chords of the song that I just played there, and they are all the chords that are in this song, um, but for the different sections they're played in different orders. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to give the chords names that are just numbers. So chord one is going to be that chord that we started with, with the one finger on the second fret of the G string. That's chord one. Chord two is going to be sliding that up to the fourth fret, so just two frets up and then putting that second finger on the fifth fret there so and that second finger is also muting the A string so that's not fretted so and chord three is going to be exactly that just slid up two frets to there and then chord four is going to be slid up one fret and then moving from the second finger to the third finger because that's a, a minor chord up there so there's a gap of two frets instead of just one in between the two fingers so we've got chord one chord two chord three chord four and the verse of this song goes one four three two so loving can hurt chord one Nothing can hurt sometimes Chord 4 It is the only thing Chord 3 Down to chord 2 And that's how the verse is going Obviously we're playing that whilst the loop's still going That's just running through the whole verse And the pre-chorus as well So When it gets hard You know it can get hard sometimes it's the only thing that makes us feel alive And then the pre-chorus is going to chord 4 Keep us loving To 2 To 1 To 3 And it's the same again And at this point we press the stop button on the loop pedal um, because there's a little bit of a pause in it there. So we'll go through that bit live with the loop going. So... We keep this love in a photograph We make these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing Hearts forever broken Time's forever frozen we still stop So you can start So it literally is just that short pause there um, and then we're into the chorus so you can keep me and that has a different order again with those chords so it's going from chord one so you can keep me to chord three up to chord four down to chord two and then up to chord three for another pause and we're stopping the loop again there but this time we're going to stop it twice quite sort of close together so um i'll show you how it goes it's uh from the from that chorus so you can keep So you can see that they're two stops quite close together. It can be a little bit confusing doing that whilst you're singing as well. But again, it's practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, and that's sort of the most, I'd say the most difficult part of stopping and starting in the song. Um, so you can just practice that part over and over again from there. <laughs> Oh. 
loving can heal. Uh, and then the next verse and pre-chorus, and chorus in fact, I think, are played with no stops. There is a stop actually between the pre-chorus and the chorus, the same stop that we've just done. But it's virtually repeating the whole song again. And then when we get to the end of the chorus again, um, those two stops don't happen anymore because it goes straight into the bit where it goes. Let the reader come home. Wait for me to come home. Wait for me to come home. Wait for me to come home. So the chords to that section go from the fourth chord to the second chord. To the first chord, up to the third chord. And then at the end of that, we're stopping the loops again for the when I'm away. So after that third chord, stop, I'm away. And then during the next part, the when I'm away bit, we're going to clear both of the channels in the loop pedal because we don't need those loops anymore and we need to build the next lot of loops up, which are done during playing the actual song. So the timing's quite vital on that bit. So, um, but I'll show you how that bit looks with the pedal and how it sounds while I'm clearing it and stuff. So go from that, wait for me to come home. arming both of the channels there because we can clear the channels uh, both together instead of having to do them one at a time so on this particular pedal it's easier um, to arm them both and clear them in one go rather than clearing one then switching to the other then clearing the other um, so I'm doing all of this during playing the when I'm away which is going from chord one I remember how to three me under the lamppost back to four Him you whisper through to two To three Wait for me to come So uh, clear, uh, Clearing on this pedal, you should probably know this, but uh, hold down on the stop button and press the start button at the same time We'll clear those away So they're now deleted um, ready for the next lot of loops which comes in at the end of that phrase. So, when I'm away, I will remember how you kissed me under the lamppost back on Sixth Street. Hear me whisper through the phone. Ready to loop? Wait for me to come home. Start. Hear me whisper through the phone. Wait for me to come home Hearing you whisper through the phone oh, oh, Wait for me to come Playback! And then that's looping over um, But you should probably notice that as I'm as I start that loop I need to move over to this mic because we also want that vocal part to loop It's not just the guitar part because then we're going to harmonise on the top of it so uh, I'll delete that loop and start it again just so that you can uh, see how that should look and how it should sound and stuff so I will remember how you kissed me under the lamppost back on 6th street hearing you whisper through the phone wait for me to come home hearing you whisper through the So you can hear that that, um, that vocal part's looped at the same time as the guitar part. So obviously that creates a little bit more pressure than the other bit, uh, the first loops in the song, because if you screw up either the guitar or the vocals or mess up the timing or anything, 
the whole of the end of the song can sound a little bit dodgy. So um, confidence is everything with that, I think, because if you're sort of worried about getting it wrong, that's when sort of mistakes start to come in and stuff. And then straight after that, we start harmonising on the top of the vocal part and we don't really need to play that guitar part again because it's looped. Um, so after the hearing you whisper through the phone, the next loop we'll get is hearing you whisper through the phone. And then after that, well, I'll loop that one in just so that you can hear it. Hearing you whisper through the phone, wait for me to come home. Hearing you whisper through the phone. So those loops are now going as well. Obviously, I'm not stopping and starting when I'm doing this live. This is just to explain it to you. Uh, and then straight after that loop, I start with a bass drum thing right the way through that whole um, phrase as well, which is another bit. The timing's got to be bang on because that's looped for the rest of the song. It needs to be on time. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm adding the next harmony, which is hearing you whisper through the phone. So that's going up again, yeah? So whilst doing that, I'll uh, just let me play through that just so that I can get the beginning of the, the loop uh, and you can hear how it sounds. It's As I always keep saying, it's just repetition. Keep doing it and you'll get more confident with it. Obviously, this is quite difficult doing it sat down as well when it goes something like this. They're all the loops. That one's bloody high to sing. I'm sure that's why Ed plays this song in this key when he does it live because it's so high, that falsetto bit there. Um, and that's all the looping for the rest of the song. Um, that Leave that going. You can play the chords over it as well so that you're not just standing there looking like a lemon on stage. Um, keep playing those chords over it. And then there's a few more like stop-start bits. So... So when Ed does this, he um, stops before he comes back in for that effect where it goes. So you can fit me inside a necklace you got when you were 16. And he's playing the rest of the song, uh, like that chorus bit. Um, and then right at the end of that, he just drops the loops out and plays the when I'm away bit again. So after the... Home. 
and that's it that's the the end of the song so uh, i hope that sort of didn't confuse you too much i know i can i have a sort of tendency for rushing through certain sections of these uh, tutorials but i hope i've explained all of the parts well enough for you to follow um, and have a go at them and if any of you guys do have a go at my cover of this and you end up putting them on YouTube please do comment the link below because I'd love to see your guys attempts at it um, it's always good to see uh, other people on YouTube doing covers and stuff so do let me know where your channels are where I can find you and stuff um, other than that yeah if you like my content please subscribe hit the bell icon for alerts when I upload new stuff you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. I'm Tweed Nelson pretty much on everything, so uh, I'm sure you can find me on there. Um, and that's all for this video. I think I've covered everything. I um, hope you've liked it and everything. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.